second season. And welcome to this windy, drizzly day here in the UK. Today I'm going to do a review on the tent I took with me to the on the Outra Resort Tour. It's this one, the Marmot Tungsten UL1P. UL1P means ultralight, one person. It comes in this bag. Now I stored this bag um, on my handlebars on the bike and it took quite a, quite a battering, just general wear and tear. And then when I fell off, um, it took even more of a battering. So I'm going to have to replace this. So I will be researching uh, what I could replace this with. I got this tent from the United States. It cost around 300 pounds with the import duty and delivery charge. I'm sure you can get it cheaper now. There just wasn't any in the country, in the UK at the time, so I had to get it from the States. I deliberated a long time as to which tent I should buy, probably two or three months uh, researching all sorts. And I went with this one because it's mid-range budget. You can be paying up to six or seven hundred pounds um, for an ultra lightweight tent. And most of them need uh, to have guy ropes and to be um, pegged out. Whereas this one, the main body is freestanding. You just put up two poles and the tent's up. Um, so let's have a look what comes in the bag. First of all, I stored two items in here that um, don't come with the tent that I store in here because it's convenient. My sleeping mat. And I didn't buy the um, footprint that you can buy for this. It's another 50 quid. Um, so I made my own. I went to the outdoor shop, bought a five quid plastic tarp, built the tent on top of it and cut around it. It's reasonably lightweight. All right, it takes up a bit of space, but it served me well. What a bargain. What actually comes in the bag is the fly sheet, two sets of poles, main tent body, and a little bag with six pegs, four guy ropes, and you also get um, three sticky back pieces of material to carry out repairs for when you melt holes in it like I do. Um, and also a repair section in case you break one of your poles. One thing I'm not going to do is put a specification list on this video because I bought this in January 2019 um, and there's no telling how long the tent was on the shelf um, and if there's new versions available and it would be the new version spec that I would get off the internet. Um, so I won't put a spec sheet on here. Um, it weighs around 1.2 kilos, the uh, tent in the bag with the poles and everything. So let's put it up now. An important thing to know about this tent is that it's narrower one end than the other. So you have to think about the orientation and where you want the vestibule. Um, but more importantly, the narrow end should always face the direction the wind is coming from. Uh, I'm not going to follow that today, um, but you have to do that for best performance in high winds. So I know that looking at it, the um, wider end is to the right of the vestibule and I want the vestibule facing this way so I need the wider end on the right. I'm using broomsticks to keep it down in the wind but you could um, find some rocks or sticks or logs uh, to help you. There are two sets of poles in the bag. They snap together really easily. They're aluminium, lightweight. And you'll notice that um, on one end, 
they're silver or grey as they call it, grey and bent. And the other end is yellow and straight and that's quite important. It's an easy reminder how to orientate the poles. Um, the bent end goes at the front two corners where the vestibule is. <laughs> main body of the tent erected. Um, I put... Now at this stage you can move it about, reorientate it if the winds change direction or if you've got it wrong and um, you could also sleep in it like this. If it's going to be fine weather you could lay and look at the stars. The mesh is very fine, it's a no see and mesh so should keep out the smallest of um, bugs and the mesh is all the way around and even though it's mesh the wind still catches it there's about eight inches um, of material here and a bathtub type um, ground sheet so the bottom section will keep nice and dry should water get on it but hopefully not with the um, ground sheet Ordinarily, I wouldn't bother pegging it down now. I'd wait until I got the fly sheet on. But with this wind, I'm going to do it now. You get six aluminium pegs in the kit. They bend very easily, but then you can easily straighten them as well. You only get six, and to put the guy ropes on, you'd need another four. And I'll just use four to peg the main body down in this wind. Um, usually, if I needed something to knock them in with, uh, I'd use a rock or a piece of wood. But I think the ground should be soft enough to poke them in here. So this is where the um, bent and straight yellow and grey poles come into play. The grey pole goes with the grey clip and the grey tab with a red tag on it. And there's one of these um, along the vestibule side in this corner and then another one in this corner grey to grey to grey. The two back corners have yellow clips and yellow poles and yellow tabs. So let's get the fly sheet on now. It's going to be fun in this wind. To help you if it's windy, um, rustle around underneath the um, fly sheet on the underneath side. And at the top, the highest point, you'll find a piece of Velcro. Now make sure you've orientated the fly sheet correctly so you get it on the right way. Obviously vestibule zip vestibule zip. So what I've done here is I've put the velcro on here and then also on each corner there are two pieces of velcro. So there's one here and that goes above the second clip up and one here that goes above the first clip up and I've put this one on and I'll just do the others <laughs> I don't usually bother if it's not windy um, but the more precise you are putting the tent up the better it's going to withstand the wind and rain so it's worth doing if you have time 
rather than doing it sloppy like I do. Right, so now we're going to um, secure the fly sheet down. And what we're going to do on the fly sheet is a hook and we're going to hook that in the loop here of the main tent body and again it's grey to grey so you know you've done it right. I won't adjust the straps yet, first of all I'll stake out the vestibule. I use two of the pegs here, um, I prefer to. I think one is meant to go on the back, but I'll show you what I do with that later. So now I need to go around, tidy it up and then pull these tabs to tighten the fly sheet down to the main body. So let's get so that's reasonably secure now. There is a vent here, so in hot weather or to get rid of condensation, you can put up the vent. The important thing I do is go around and make sure the ground sheet isn't sticking out from the tent. Now I mentioned staking out the rear. There is a tab here. I'm not really sure how you're meant to do it, but what I do is lay my bicycle at the back of the tent, lay it down, and I put my bike lock cable through here and through the frame of the bike, and I peg the back of the tent out um, under tension to the bike, and it does that nicely. I also place a bungee from this pole to the bike frame, and from this pole to the bike frame. Now I do that hoping that if someone should try and nick it, um, that I'll hear some rustling. So you get four guy ropes and four plastic clips in the kit, and you have to assemble it yourself. Tie a knot in one end, feed it down through, up through, then down through. Simples. <laughs> so I can't be asked to put them all on, but in any sort of wind, you really ought to put your guy ropes on. So let's get one on and to, just to show you. There's a tag at each corner for the guy ropes. Um, unfortunately, well, it might be fortunate for you, but um, if you're trying to stealth camp, it's not very good. Uh, these tags have a high vis strip on them. So if you're stealth camping, you might want to uh, use a marker pen to get rid of those. Now, so that's basically it. Tie it onto the tag, adjust it on the clip, 45 degree angle, and that's your guy rope on. This is the cable to um, take the vestibule out, and this is the zip. It's a two way zip, and but I put it on its own stake and very rarely does this zip snag. It has a toggle and tag to pin it back. It's a little difficult to do with a camera in your hand. So that's pegged back. There are two. So there's, um, you can open the tent right up. Vestibule door, the zip also doesn't snag, but I would advise doing it with two hands because you have to get around this corner and there's nothing to hold it down if you haven't got two hands. So I'd say use two hands because um, it's very fine mesh and you're pulling hard against it when you're pulling the zip. Again, it has a toggle and a tag to hold it back. Again, difficult with one hand. So 
although the vestibule is quite big, I don't know the actual figures, but I'd say it's probably two thirds the size of the tent. And I put all of my um, gear outside here that I don't need uh, with me inside the tent. The only thing I don't put in the tent or the vestibule is my bike. Now it's not advisable to cook in a tent. This is flammable and you could end up having a disaster, but I do. Um, this is too low to cook here. So I cook here and um, along the door, um, I put my camping towel to um, try and prevent anything catching light. But I do cook here. The zip is two way, so you can undo here to let out the fumes or any steam. I have um, melted some holes in, in it. Now this isn't from cooking. This is because I like joss sticks to keep the mozzies away. And then I forget they're there and um, I burn holes in my tent. But I've repaired them with the repair kit and they seem fine. But um, you need to be very careful cooking or having fire near a tent. When it's windy, if it's very windy, I'll take all my bags out of the vestibule and I'll distribute them inside in the tent to add weight to the structure, um, which did help in a strong wind uh, that I camped in. Now when it comes to rain, I've slept in here in one thunderstorm and I didn't get wet. It rained heavily from about three in the morning till eight in the morning. And because the material's so thin, it dries out very quickly. Wind, so twice I've been in very strong winds um, and a couple of other times lighter winds, but still windy. Um, the first time I put the tent up wrong, I faced the long vestibule side towards um, a mountain and uh, because it looked pretty. And then suddenly, very strong wind dropped down from that mountain. I'm guessing it would be 20 knots at least. And um, it battered the tent. It, um, it pushed this front, uh, the vestibule, it pushed it right in. It was um, quite scary. It was pulled right, right in. And it started um, bending both these posts, well, all of the posts. Um, and I did think it was going to collapse, um, but it didn't. I put the guy ropes on then, and I'd used lots of rocks uh, to support them. And to be honest, putting the tent up wrong, facing the wind with the long side, isn't a good idea, because it's so thin and tall. Um, and I wouldn't want to be in a stronger wind than that, because I think that was the limit. The posts were... Um, really bending and I think you might have problems. Now the second time um, I was in wind I'd faced it correctly into the wind and I'm guessing around at least 30 knots and uh, the, tent, the tent shook a lot um, and I put all my uh, bags and everything out of the vestibule in side for extra weight and I think that helped a lot. I think um, that's probably quite important. It gives stability to the um, main structure. Um, again that was scary, it shook a lot and um, I don't think I'd want to be in stronger winds than that to be honest in this because it is as I say tall and thin. I obviously haven't done extensive high mountain, high wind testing, so I can't tell you what winds it's going to withstand. I don't know if any, anyone can, um, if anyone's got any stories about uh, this tent in the wind. Um, but in general uh, winds, you know, it shakes a bit, but it's, it's not too bad. But in gale force, um, it was the Levante wind I was um, subjected to in Spain. <laughs> and uh, that is quite a strong wind. Phew, so all of a sudden the sun comes out and it's very hot in here now I've shut the doors. Um, so that's why you need the vent. Inside, 
you have a tab here, here, up here, and here and here. And you can see I've strung some string through them and I hang um, all sorts of things on there. Anything I want to dry or get out of the way. Really handy. There's a pocket here where you can put your torch. Um, I'd say, going by experience, when you're sleeping, take the torch out of there. Um, because I needed to get out the tent really quickly one night because I thought someone was outside the tent and I have had to faff about trying to get the torch out of the pocket. It's a real pain. And so put it by your side when you're sleeping I'd say. This is the narrow end of the tent. And this is the wider end. The um the door is offset so there's a bigger gap to the narrow end than there is to the wider end. I sleep with my head up the wider end. You don't have to, it's not the law. You can sleep the other way, and I have done when I've positioned the tent incorrectly um, on an incline. Uh, so I find um, I can sleep on an incline as long as my head is at the top and my feet are going down it. Um, so just watch for that, because there's not always a flat place to, to um, pitch up. So I sleep with my head here because there's a pocket here and in this pocket I put things I might need to grab quickly in the night, uh, my phone, my glasses um, a, and a weapon. So I'm five foot eight um, which may help you gauge how much room there is in here. I lie slightly to the right, just here. And um, my air bed comes up to where my ankles are and it's extra wide so it comes out to about here. So I have room down the bottom and up the side to put other stuff. I keep my food here, my laptop and electronics in a dry bag here, and my rucksack here. You can see how much spare room there is. Along here I'll put chargers, my light and other things, odds and sods. Um, as far as headroom goes, so if I sit, this is the highest point here. There's loads of space and if I move backwards and forwards, I'm not actually touching the netting at all. Um, and luckily you're surrounded by the netting, so you're not touching the fly sheet at all, so you're not getting all soggy with condensation. Returning to headroom. Now I'm five foot eight, but we're not all the same, are we? Um, you know, you could be five foot eight and have shorter legs and a longer body, so then therefore you won't have as much headroom as I've got. Um, so you'll have to kind of gauge it for yourselves uh, from the specifications that you look up uh, when you buy the tent. And so that's basically this wonderful little tent. I love it. I love being in here. I have my food, my water and a shelter and you're shut away from the world. So let's see how quickly I can take this down and package it up. It's pretty quick actually because there's no rolling up or precise folding to do. Let's get on with it. So that's my take on the Marmot Tungsten UL1P. I'm glad I bought it. 
I'm really happy with the purchase um, for many reasons. Um, it's easy to put up, it's even easier to take down. Um, it's very easy to pack away. There's no um, folding or rolling or anything. You just stuff it into the pack. It goes in every time, first time, really easy. Um, it's quite robust for how lightweight it is at 1.2 kilos and middle of the range at 300 pounds. I think it's good value for money. And um, it's put together really well. And I think and I, I think have another Marmot tent. I have a Marmot Fortress two person and that's just as good. Um, they are put together very nicely and um, I'm not very careful. I'm a clumsy person and I haven't managed to break it yet. So that says something. So overall, thumbs up to the Tungsten UL1P. I hope I've answered any questions you may have had about the tent. If not, please um, pop your question in the comments and I'll see if I can answer it for you. I'm going to close this episode here. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you liked it, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, please, please subscribe. And um, until next time, I'll say goodbye for now. Apollo, le cha cha cha. Apollo, le cha cha cha.